here Let's put the family Bible back on the table Oh, put the American flag back out in the yard Let's put the sign that says I love Jesus Back on the front of the family car Let's put God back in America again Get down our knees and turn from our sin Let's put prayer back in the school And live by the golden rule Let's put God back in America again Let's put the Ten Commandments back in the courthouse Oh, let's make it law for which we stand And then the whole wide world will know without a shadow of a doubt That marriage is one woman and one man Let's put God back in America And live by the golden rule Let's put God back in America again Cause after all He's done for us You better believe in God we trust Let's put God back in America again Amen, and welcome right here in the pulpit. We're going to be blessed today as uh, Pastor Evangelist uh, Brother Steve Warren brings the Word of God to the people of God. So sit back and just absorb the Word of God from the man of God. Pastor Evangelist Brother Steve Warren right here in the pulpit at the Gospel Music Jukebox Radio Program. Be blessed, my friends. Be blessed. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord have a say-so. So if you've got any blood on you tonight, you've got a right to talk. Right, right. Anybody washed? Amen. Anybody free? Amen. How many's got blood all over you tonight? Amen. How many has a past that you're glad God set you free of? Amen. And you've got a life now, this life now, the Bible says, which is now in Christ Jesus. You're proud to be called one of the great. Of the great I am. Mm, come on, amen. Say hallelujah. That great army the Bible talks about. That's why I say great. The Bible speaks of that great army in these last days. It's being raised to go out and do something. Anybody up in here know what it's like to fight? Anybody up here know what it's like to win? See, the Bible teaches us that not only has God called you to fight, but he has empowered you to win. You're not just a fighter. I can go in any church, any faith, any denomination. And I can find fighters. Somebody's fighting something in this building tonight. Somebody in here is fighting a physical infirmity. Somebody's fighting a marital issue. Somebody's fighting some financial grief and despair. Somebody's going through something. Anybody with me up in the room tonight? But how many of you understand that God just didn't call you to fight? 
but he empowered you to win. You must fight because the writer said it like this, and when I have fought a good fight and kept the faith, then henceforth is laid for me a crown of righteousness and a robe of pure white. So you got to be a fighter. Somebody say a fighter. Somebody look around, somebody say the devil's a working. He's in America working. He's in the world a working. He's coming for three distinct reasons, the Bible says. He comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. That's why you have a fight on your hands. But I want you to know that Jesus said, but I come. My God, let me preach a little bit up in here. I come that you might have life and that life in the abundance. How many are glad for the abundance of life in God? Hallelujah. I want you to go with me tonight. I'm going to try not to preach over a couple of days. Y'all looking at me funny? Somebody say, go ahead and just preach and let the Holy Ghost have his way. Let Jesus show up. I want you to go with me tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Go there with me. Look at somebody one more time and say, God just hadn't called you to fight. But he's empowered you to win. The Bible says it like this, that after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you, you shall receive power. We're not looking into the faces of a powerless generation then. We're looking into the faces of God's elect, His ordained, His blood bought, His born again people that have the power not only to fight, but the power to win. Brother, when I think about the revivals of the yesteryear, when I think about when people talk about the revivals of the 50s, when I think about people talking about the revivals of the 60s and the 70s and even prior to that, I think about people of God that tapped into the supernatural flow of the Holy Ghost. And that's why they become that more than a conqueror. I don't know who got in the pulpits of America or the world for that matter and taught us that we're parts of the chosen frozen. You're not hearing me. That we're the beaten and the gloomed and the lonely. That ain't what the Bible calls us. The Bible tells us we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and heir to God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That there's something alive living inside of us because we have Holy Ghost power. Anybody got Holy Ghost power in this room tonight? Then you do have the power to become more than a conqueror. You're not just a conqueror, but because you have the power of God more than a conqueror, it puts you in that great category, that great army that God is raising up. And it's nothing that you've done that makes you greater. I have done. It's because the hand of Jesus Christ has rested upon us. The Bible says to wake up the mighty men of valor. So there's mighty men in the world today that need to be awakened. Somebody say hallelujah. How many of you know there's churches that need to come awake? There's preachers that need to come awake. There's a giant rolling around. There's a killer rolling around. The devil is doing his job. It's time for the church to raise up in Holy Ghost power and tell the devil you're done right here. I draw the line right here. You can't have my children and you can't Says, and I love reading this. I refer to it often in messages that I preach. But I want to read it to you tonight. God, I just thank you for your word. And I ask that every ear be attentive and every heart receptive. God, we just thank you for another privilege. We have to be in your house. In Jesus' name, and every devil kicker, tongue talker, pew flipper, owl runner, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Chapter 13, the book of Numbers says this, And the Lord spake, Thank God for a word from the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto thee, the children of Israel. The Bible says, Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. Now I've got to stop right there and push the timetable forward. It says this in verse 25. So they did go after picking these select vessels to check out the valley where the giants were, the sons of Anak. Somebody say a giant's in your world tonight, but God's give you power to conquer the giant. There's a giant of sickness and a giant of financial despair. There's a giant of marital issue and crisis. There's a giant that's rolling through your nation right now that's deceiving the very elect if possible, but it's time for the redeemed to stand up and have a voice and be heard by God. So the Bible says then they Return, so they must have went and done what the man of God commissioned them to do. So they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. I thought about this preacher. I thought it took them 40 days to bring a bad report back 
to the man of God. They could have come back the next evening and said, I saw giants and we were in our own eyes as grasshoppers. They could have come back the next day and told that. It took them 40 days to bring a bad report back to try to dishearten and to try to stop the men of God from moving toward what God had promised Caleb. Caleb understood there was a mountain waiting on the other side of the valley where the sons of Anak were. Somewhere in that mountain was a promise. How many you understand that God has a promise for you tonight? God's word promises you that if you're sick, he'll heal you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. But he was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by those stripes you're healed. I'm a believer that when the writer looked to the cross, he said, by your stripes, Lord Jesus, I'm healed. And then when the writer looked back at the cross, he said, by your stripes, we were healed. So if we are healed and we were healed, that sounds pretty healed to me because we serve a God that cannot lie. Somebody raise your hand and say hallelujah. The Bible says, skipping down to verse 3, so Caleb started skilling the people. Now I'm a believer, Pastor Gary, that Caleb was not some little old wimpy commander. Oh God, to hear me. I don't believe Caleb stopped them and said, y'all hush now. I've got something to say. <sighs> y'all ain't helping me lick up in here. I don't believe that. But I believe that Caleb was a commander commissioned by God under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Bible said he stealed the people. So therefore, if he stealed the people, I can't help but believe there was so much animosity going on that he said, y'all hush. Somebody look around somebody and just tell the devil, say, I don't tell the devil to shut up what he's telling you. He's telling you you ain't going to get healed. And he's telling you you're not going to be blessed. And he's telling you your children are not going to get saved. Somebody raise up with a sword under the power of God and just say, devil, I said, shut up. Greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that is within the world. Somebody get bold enough tonight to tell the devil, say, devil, shut your mouth. That are so meek and laid back, wild in the fight. My wife is one of a very beautiful girl. She'll sit back there and tears run down. That's all right. But you let one of my kids do something. You're not a sack now. I'm gonna come up and beat you. You can't go in here for the Some of these little meek and mild granddaddies, grandmas, and stuff have been here. Bring them grand. Kids over to your house for 30 minutes. You turn into the Tasmanian devil after they break your little whatnots. Somebody say, I know what a whatnot is. You know what a whatnot is? A whatnot's what somebody brought you from Florida and Hawaii and Dallas, Texas, and a little thing. If one of them grandkids break your whatnot, you go crazy, don't you, Granny? Y'all ain't helping me preach. Little Susie don't look so sweet because the veins pop out in your neck and you say, I've had my all I'm going to take you this.
Bible says before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. He wasn't talking about his strength. I'm going to get to preach in just a minute. Y'all need to let me get the preliminaries out of the way. But the men that went up with him, we be not able. I get very upset when I'm trying to accomplish something in Jesus. And somebody that's a tongue talker or a prayer full of the blood and the spirit looks at me and says, I don't know whether we can get through that or not. Somebody needs to pull out a stinky wet sock and whip them that they can't even walk. And tell them you don't know who you are. Because if you knew who you was in Christ Jesus, you would understand the Bible says that I know who I am. Somebody say hallelujah. I know who I am. And neither height nor depth. No things present. No things to come. No principality. No power shall be able to separate me when I know who I am. It's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. Mm. Looking more to the opposition rather than the God that can change the opposition. Somebody say, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Listen to what it says right here. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which came of the giants and we were in our own eyes. Listen now, in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I'm going to tell you something. How the devil focuses in on you is one thing, but how you focus in on the God you serve is something else. The devil has said to some of you, he said, you'll never get out of this mess. Come on, somebody. He's told some of you, you might as well quit, backslide, quit, don't even think about going to church. Nothing's going to change, and just about the time. Oh, these are 
Baptist, they used the Methodist, they used the Church at all, they used the Independent, they used the Apostolic, they used the Lutheran. You know, you live, there's the first Baptist, the first Church of God. The one, two, three, and four. There's a lot of people in the kingdom. But there's very few with the kingdom in them. Somebody said you got the kingdom in you. You know a little bit about this warfare. When you got the kingdom in you, you just tell the devil, I know what God said I can have. I'm going to wait around until it shows up. God, let me preach up in this house. My God, can I, can I finish up in this room? My God, somebody let me finish. Somebody say I'm a little persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I'm a little cast down, the Bible said, but I can't be destroyed. Somebody and say a revelation. Somebody say when he gets in you. When this knowledge gets in you, you get a warrior mindset about you. Mm. You just tell God, you say, God, I know at times I walk through some pretty treacherous walls. I know I had some disappointment, I've cried a tear or two. But I know who you are. I know what you can give me. And I know how you can change it. My God, can I finish up in this room? And, and then all of a sudden, the giant doesn't look as big anymore. I'm going to prophesy over you tonight. I don't know anything about you, but I know what God's about to do for you. The spirit of the living God's about to rip a veil back. And the blessing that the devil has tried to hold back over your life. That the devil messed up. I don't know where this is coming from. But God said, where the devil has messed up. God said, I'm about to fix a few things. And I'm about to bring some joy and peace and happiness in your life like you never dreamed possible. If I've ever looked at a young lady in God that has fallen giant, I'm looking at you. My God, you've wet your pillow the night and your tears and your pain has been more than you can share with this church. But God saw your tear and he felt your pain and the devil screamed at you at times and told you to quit and back up. But God said you just kept fighting the good fight. And God said because Somebody say amen. But somebody say 
when the word gets a hold of you, when you got a word from the throne room, when you know who you are, when you understand what the fight is and who's already made you more than a conqueror, you don't pay no attention to the opposition anymore, but you focus more on the deliverer. Somebody shout hallelujah. David understood that this wasn't a thing that he was going to fight in the natural. This was something he was going to fight with his power that God had given him. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm not fighting this thing in the natural. Back up, devil. God didn't fill me with the Holy Ghost to fight in the natural. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and give me power over serpent and scorpion over all the power of the enemy. Do I have anybody that believe the Holy Ghost has power? Yeah. 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 Time to quit. But the church gets a misconception of what the Holy Ghost is for. Now watch me. The Holy Ghost it's not just to jump pews and shout and talk in tongues and flip backwards and lay in the floor. I believe in all that. Don't get me wrong. Come on, somebody. I've often said there's two phases of his power and that I know personally. I know the edification and I know the manifestation. The edification of his power is when you feel them goosebumps run up your back. I mean, how many felt you say, God, somebody cut the air on? No, they didn't. You just got touched by the hand of the maker. Somebody say, I felt him, and it felt like the hair was going to stand up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and how many times have you been in a valley, and, and, and you didn't know what you was going to do, and, and you just get in your car, and you flip the radio on, and it just so happened that somebody was singing a song about something you going through, but they talked about a God that can bring you out. It wasn't by chance. It was that God had that thing divinely orchestrated. Somebody helped and you felt the Holy Ghost and you begin to shout. You pulled up to the stop sign talking in tongues. My God, you pulled up to the red light going hallelujah. You shaking and people looking at you like you're crazy. Somebody say, that's edification. Well, let me talk about some manifestation. Can I talk about it? Thank God we can shout. Thank God we can speak in tongues. Thank God we can run and dance and flip over pews. But I'm glad for the manifestation. Manifestation is when devils just fall and cancer just gets healed and blinded eyes just come open and lame men get out of wheelchairs and walk and drug addicts come to an altar and get saved. Somebody shout. And the reason they get saved and bodies get healed, somebody said, devil, I took it till I'm not going to take it no more. Get your hands off my daughter. Get your hands off my mind. Get your hands off my money. Get, 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 get. Jesus. Amen. There ain't no whippy sissy boys in the kingdom. Ain't no room for no Gomer Powell mentalities in this here army. Holy Shazam! All right. Somebody say it's a real fight. Somebody say it's a real struggle. It's a real devil trying to attack my body. It's a real. I'm not trying to pick up, bring the devil up. No, no, I'm just showing him. I'm going to put him on the target so we can kill him tonight. It's a real devil trying to mess with your mind. It's a real devil trying to take your money. It's a real circumstance trying to steal your joy. It's a real devil trying to mess up your marriage. Somebody say hallelujah. People talk about the devil. They talk about what he's doing and what he's done. But they seem to forget that you have something to retaliate with. Oh, somebody let me preach. You hear preachers talk, well, you know what? The devil's coming to church and then torn the church out the pieces. Glory to God. Well, sister says, look, we got sick and the young. Well, I'll tell you, they're the more rebellious than I've ever seen them before. And we go to talk and all that garbage. Well, I just kind of know if the Lord's ever going to shove up in my house or not. Somebody say, devil, I've had all I'm going to take. This is not a game I'm playing, devil. This is war. I declare war. We be more than enough to take them out. Do you want your mountain? Do you want what you're fighting for? Do you want it? Do you desire it? Do you need it? Is it yours? 
pastor stood in the pulpit tonight and made a profound statement from the word of God. He said something like this. He said, for the things that seem impossible with man. You know what man's going to tell you? The same thing them bunch of sissy boys told Caleb. Oh, that's pretty hard. By the way, in the we get up around them giants. It's like standing about no angel in the living. Ain't it just like the church? Here we go out here and we're in a real struggle. For we wrestle not flesh and blood, but the principalities of the air and the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. I mean, no, it's a war. The Brown tells somebody, say, this is a battle we're fighting. It, it, it's a war we're engaged in. It's, it's a real deal. They start moving in this thing. How many understand that there's times you don't know what it is, but you feel the oppressor? How many says, I don't know, they did something that they don't feel right. I can't put my finger on it, but I can feel the devil is fighting. Mean, I mean, no, I'm talking about. He might know what I'm talking about. Somebody look around, somebody say, I know what that preacher's saying now. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing him work. And he goes to working in your children's life. Oh, God. There's a man sitting on this front pew tonight that came with me that is a recipient of a message like this. This man sitting on the front pew, I thought if there was ever a drug addict, that, that was the worst of the worst. You're probably looking at him. This man took everything that you could imagine. If there was pills laying on your counter and he didn't know you and didn't know what the pill was, he'd take it, just swoop it up, put it in his mouth. It might have been birth control. He didn't care. He just put it in your ain't He just put it in his mouth. He said, I grabbed a pill bottle. Just turn them up. He said, I drank everything you can imagine. He said, you've seen how big syringes the cows, they give cows injections with for vaccination. The big syringe. He said, I'd fill that up with the dope and shoot it in my vein. He said, I couldn't get enough. And he was on a work site up in Knoxville, Tennessee. He's a professional driller by trade. Drilling into these mountains and blowing up hillsides so interstates can go through. And his drill got into 9,800 volts of current. And it blown up and went through his body. Electrocuted him. Knocked his thighs out like you burst a pumpkin on the ground. He's laying there dying. But he had a mama that was calling out to the king of glory. The Burns all over his body. Dying. He told me, he said, preacher. I call him Stone Cold Steve Austin. He said, preacher, my whole life flashed before me. His mama was praying. <coughs> Holy Ghost woman of the faith. Amen. Where the effectual fervency, the prayer of the righteous, avail much. Give me somebody I'm up in here tonight. Uh, give me somebody that's connected. What if Caleb would say, Well, that's what it looks like, and now I guess we'll just have to go back to the house. That's what some of us say. If it's that bad, well, I'll just tell you, I guess I'll better give up and just shut her down. Glory to God. I've done all that. You ain't done all you can do. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, when you've done all you do, you stood all you can stand. Don't you back up, don't sit down, don't fly your flag or surrender. Somebody say, stand. Stand still and let God move. Because when you're standing still, the salvation of the Lord is about to open up and unveil itself around you. I watched God, through his testimony, bring a man from a drug culture. He was dying. Do you hear me? Somebody say, dying. One of the biggest drug addicts had come through the state of Tennessee. He's been beat. He's had butcher knives run in his back to the house. Stab several. Y'all ain't letting me preach up in here. He said, I took seven men on at one time. So drunk, so polluted on narcotics. I didn't know who I was. But thank God for a mother that declared war on the gate of hell. Somebody let me preach up in this house. Some of you are not here because you're here. You're here because of a testament of somebody that told the devil, get your filthy, dirty, rotten hands off of them. And the devil had to listen. I remember his mama laying in the hospital bed last year 
with a back surgery. We're talking about clothes that most of you ain't paying attention to. You look at it. I ain't up here flattening my gums for no reason. I'm up here trying to break it. Say amen. Amen. Don't flatten my gums or we'll get a big man. Amen. His mama lay up in the hospital bed in Cookville. She looked at me and I walked in to visit with her after she came out of the surgery. I sat down by her bed. His daddy, right at 80 years old now, standing there. His mom in so much pain looked over at me. Here's exactly what she said. Her body in pain, she looked at me. She said, I'm so proud of what God has done through Ronnie. I looked at her, I said, man, you're in pain. That's what I'm thinking to myself. She looked past her pain, Ronnie, to thank God for what he done for you the day she pulled her sword out. Somebody say, I got a helmet of salvation. Got a breastplate of righteousness. Got my feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Got a sword. Mm, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm, my God, somebody say, I'm equipped. I looked at her and she looked up at me. She said, I remember a day when hell had its hands on Ronnie. I said, tell me more, tell me more. Somebody let me preach up in here. She said, I remember a day when the drug world just collapsed around him and tried to take his life. She said, but I also remember the day that I took all I'm going to take. Come on, God, somebody hear me. She said, and I began to pray to the prayer bills of heaven wrong. Do I have any of them warriors up in this building tonight? Give me some of them prayer warriors in this house. Don't just tell the devil, listen, I know my prayers are not in vain. I'm shaking hell with my prayers and I'm ringing the prayer bells of heaven. My God, can you let me finish? Let's see, Lord. I looked into her eyes and there's tears run out of her eyes. She says to me, she says, I'll tell you what God's about to do for Ronnie. I said, what's that? She said, God's going to make as good if not better worker out of him for the kingdom as the devil used the young for destruction. And the power of God in her, Ronnie, she did like that. And the tears flowed from each side of her eyes. Thank God for the day your mama said, that's enough. I've had it. You're not taking it anymore. What? He had time to give his testimony to you. Blow your mind the places that God has brought him from. And the things that God has done through him. Because somebody put their foot down. I mean, you tonight said, put my foot down. I had all I'm going to take. I could die, but I think I'm going to live. I, I, I couldn't go broke, but I think, I think I'm just going to get up here. Let God put something in my hand that I can pay something with. God, somebody here. I, I couldn't go through the tube and just vanish away, but I think I'm going to come back. Somebody look around, somebody say, I'm coming back for a comeback. Y'all ain't letting me preach. <laughs> somebody say, I'm going to come back. I, I, I might be down, but I'm getting up. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Uh, they may look like they're not going to get saved, but I'm making a proclamation before hell tonight. God told me that He'd save my household, so I'm telling the devil, get your filthy hands off that daughter. Get your hands off that grandson. Get your hands off that granddaughter. I make a stand tonight. Some of you up in this place are about to walk into some miracles. Some of you are about to walk into some answers. Some of you are about to walk into some overflows. Because some of you said, I've had all I want to take. Some of you have seen the bad side of some things you've prayed about, but you're about to see the good thing now. You've already been on this side, now it's about to change. Somebody look at somebody and say, change is on the way. Can you tell them, look at somebody and just encourage them, say, change is on the way. Something's about to change. I couldn't believe the giant, but I think I just believe God. I couldn't believe the opponent, but I think I just believe the promise. Oh my God, in Him are the promises of the living God. You know the song that old Charles Johnson sang, and I, I have the privilege of saying it from time to time, that says, I can't even walk without him holding to my hand. Try looking at somebody and say, that goes for me too. 
You know, I could try to fight this thing by myself, but I think I'll just put my hand in the unchangeable hand of a living God. And the power of God's about to lift me from one place and thrust me to another. Something's about to change. Revival's about to hit my house. Somebody that's in my family that's drug-induced tonight is about to come in and get saved. My God, do you understand that there's a wave of salvation that's in America right now? Would you believe me? Would you believe me in the last several months in our ministry, we've seen drug addicts come in? I think you've seen it right up in this room. God says, I'm tired of it. Somebody's took and stood all they can stand. Somebody has made a stand before the gate of hell and say, get your hands off of our children. Somebody look at somebody and say, I tell the devil to get his hands off of your grandson and off of your granddaughter. I, I speak the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Yes. Somebody's got to be the one that will just go to the plate. Caleb was that man because he had the power to do it. Now, I'm not looking in as a music player. I'm not looking into the faces of a powerless generation. I'm looking into the faces of the spiritual generation of today. We need a revival that will start up in the White House and end up right over here at your house. Y'all need to let me finish up up in this place. We need a revival that will sweep through your nation and your world. And we need warriors to come out of their slumber and their sleep. My God, somebody hear me. I had a man, it, it bothers me, Pastor, when bishops come to me and said they had six or 16 sets of keys turned into them from 16 pastors that have quit. Bishop said, I have 16 sets of keys to 16 churches that don't have a pastor. I said, what went on? He said, they said they can't take it. It's too bad. They, they, they can't handle the fight anymore. They, 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 they're battle beaten. They're battle bruised. And I said, are you kidding? He said, I wouldn't lie about that. Come on. I said, why don't you tell him? He said, I didn't know what to say to him. This is a mission. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You mean you didn't know what to say to him? <laughs> you know what he did? <laughs> Come on. If I am a bishop, and I'm, I'm a bishop, but I'm not that kind of bishop. I have men and women that are licensed through my ministry. But if I was a bishop of this well-known organization, I'm not going to mention the name of the organization. Don't make me different. Because this ain't a Baptist thing. This ain't a Church of God thing. This ain't a Lutheran thing. This ain't a Church of Christ thing. This is a God thing. If people can learn to push their divider points out of the way and just have church, let the Holy Ghost show up. I wish I could get some folk just to throw their denominational values out the door and just let the spirit flow. They'd see themselves conquer a giant because David come against Goliath in the name of the Lord. That was the weapon of his warfare. It's not carnal, but mighty through God with the pulling down of the stronghold. I said, you didn't say nothing to 16 preachers. He said, I didn't know what to tell them. He said, some of them have been in the ministry 20 years or longer. I said, what are they going to do? He said, I don't know. I accepted the resignation. I took the keys to the church and I tried to find the pastors. The same in here saying this is a legitimate thing. I thought, dear God, if I had 16 pastors resign on me, brother, and I was the bishop, I would have to look at them and say, you must have been listening to the spies that brought the report. You must have seen the child and view yourself as a grasshopper in their sight. I want to tell you something right up front. Little is much when God's in it. I've seen little bitty grannies so weak they can't hardly carry their Bible in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, full of the Holy Ghost. You get a man at the devil, they'll pick a refrigerator up and pull it through the house. Somebody say amen. I had, I had one of them. Oh God, I had one of them. I mean, you get her mad at the devil. I've seen her, I'd be sick. And think I'm going to die. And Granny come in the bedroom, she'd say, How are you now, boy? I said, Granny, I ain't good. Huh? I've been praying. Don't you think my prayers reach God? I said, yeah, I know they do. Well, then act like it. <laughs> she'd go out about 30 minutes, come back, I'd be lit. I mean, I'm dying. Man, I'm telling you, I'm so sick, I can't understand. I'm trusting God. I know y'all don't ever get sick in here. 
Yeah, you do too. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I've tasted a little disappointment. I've had a little anxiety. I've had a devil show up at my house once in a while. Come on, somebody. She'd come back in there, and I'd, I'd be laying there, and I'd hear her coming. I'd act like I'm all right. She'd say, how are you now? I'm doing better. And you're lying. Well, what do you want me to tell you? She says, why don't you just let God show up and beat that devil up? You lay in your bed, you moan and groan, you lick your wounds. She said, I'm going to come in here in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to slap hands on you, boy, and I'm going to command that thing to leave. She said, you want me to do that? I said, oh, please. And that little frail woman that didn't probably have strength to get up and make biscuits and gravy in the morning. She come in that bedroom and that little off the red can was bent like that. She'd go lay it on my forehead and she'd say, God. You know, I'm a little Pentecostal women. You know, when the Holy Ghost hits when they do this. Y'all ain't helping me a little bit. Come on, somebody. I ain't making fun of them. Come on, I love it. I'm talking about that little Pentecostal women got them buns on top of their head. And they're going to shout. My hairpins fly. It's like 22 shells being shot in the room. Ricochet. Y'all ain't letting me preach. She come in and she said, ah! <laughs> She had the hack going on. <laughs> She lay her hand on me. I feel the Holy, Holy Ghost hit me on top of my head, go through my feet. I come up out of that bed healed in the name of Jesus Christ because she took dominion over it. Hey. You can play with him if you want to. You can say we be more than enough. All right. I have some people like that before I leave tonight. I wouldn't lie to you for nothing. Got no reason to. I didn't come to Elton, Kentucky to preach lies. I got a little girl that's got beautiful blue eyes. And she's pretty just like her daddy. Did I say that? She gets up on my lap and talks to me. Daddy, when we're going to Mall. I wouldn't leave her. Come tell a lie. I got boys, 15 years old, and a half an inch taller than I am right now. He's a cowboy. You ever got cowboy boots on? He got his George Strait jeans on, his George Strait shirts he goes and gets, and a big old buckle looks like a hook cap on a 54 coat. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, he walking around. I got that hair spiked up. Got that, got that military cut with them spikes on top. You know what I'm talking about? I said, why are you wearing like that? He said, well, that way I'm wearing a cowboy hat. They don't bless my hair. Uh. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I could take him fishing. We might go shoot basketball. I ain't got time to lie. But I got time to tell you the truth. God's about to show up and declare war over your life. Some things are about to change. You must believe that. You must trust that. Because you desire it and you need it. God said you will look at this night in the future. You will look back at this night and say, Oh, what I got when God showed up to fight for me. I speak that over your life. The happiest days of your life lay ahead of you and not behind you. I speak that out of my spirit, out of the prophet side of me, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm going to tell you, God said what the giants have stomped and destroyed. God said, I'll return it more than you ever could have had before. Save the Lord of the host. Can somebody help me? Is that, is that pretty close to being right? Or if it ain't, I'll sit down and quit. Do I need to go home? Anybody with me? Are we on it? Is it right on it? I'll go to the house. I got a little old Toyota out there to get us to the house. Amen. Gas is so high, I'm going to cut holes in the floorboards make them pedal like Fred Webstone to get us out of here. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping them yet. Come on. Hallelujah. Things are about to change. Circumstances are about to be turned. Somebody's declaring war in your behalf tonight. My God, do you believe that?
year Let's put the family Bible back on the table Oh, put the American flag back out in the yard Let's put the sign that says I love Jesus Back on the front of the family car Let's put God back in America again Get down our knees and turn from our sin Let's put prayer back in the school And live by the golden Let's put God back in America again Let's put the Ten Commandments back in the courthouse Oh, let's make it law for which we stand And then the whole wide world will know without a shadow of a doubt that marriage is one woman and one man Let's put God back in America again Get down on our knees and turn from our sin Let's put prayer back in the school And live by the golden Let's put God back in America again Cause after all He's done for us You better believe in God we trust Let's put God back in America again Get down on our knees and turn from our sin And live by the golden rule Let's put God back in America Keep God in America Put God back in America Again